Juggernaut, he bashes through the walls, practicing to do that. Yeah, I don't really see that happening. Why not? Newton's third law of motion. Any force applied to an object is also felt by the object, applying the force at exactly the same magnitude. Like this. I'm standing on this block. It experiences the force of my weight from the acceleration of my mass due to gravity. But, simultaneously, I feel the ground holding me up and keeping me from falling at exactly the same force that my weight applies. So in order for you to smash through the wall, your body would have to be able to withstand the force necessary to break it down. The odds of that happening, I would say, for a lack of better words, are just not great. Besides, it's a movie. Hey man, get closer to the sidewalk. I think that's Jake. I'm gonna hit him in the head as we drive by. I don't think that's a good idea. What? Why not? Because of the concept of relative velocity. Newton says that the relative velocity of your hand to his head is the vector sum of your hand's relative velocity to the car. <laughs> plus the car's velocity relative to him. So you think that your hand moves forward at 5 meters per second when it hits his head. It actually moves that plus the cars, 45 kilometers per hour, which would be closer to 18 meters per second. That's almost four times the velocity that you think it is, and thus will hit his head a lot harder. I know you think it would be funny to see him hurt worse, but it would also hurt your hand, as Newton's third law of motion states. <laughs> can't get away from this physics stuff. It's everywhere. Yep, it inhabits everything in our day-to-day -day lives. Hey, what you doing? Hey, uh, just reading some physics. Oh, cool. friction force. Everything about it seemed fine until I saw this. How can the magnitude of static friction be less than the given value? Well, just think about this. Static friction refers to the friction of the object when it isn't moving. The magnitude of the static friction force is only as large as the force that I apply to it. I'm pressing a certain force on it, so the friction force is equal to that force. I can press harder and it is still equal. It will always be equal until the instant that the force I apply exceeds that value. Then the friction force will decrease and become kinetic friction. Note that the magnitude of any friction force is merely a factor to the normal force. To find the net force of the system that has kinetic friction force as a factor, you would just subtract the friction force from the force applied, assuming that said force was greater than friction and that the system was moving. Remember. If you were pressing on the object, the force exerted at that point of contact follows Newton's third law of motion. But the net force refers to a system as a whole, such as if I were to place a scale in front of the path of travel. You should put that away now. You need a break. 